Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of the greatest jazz books ever written, <laughs> Jazz Piano Fundamentals and Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And I'm here with like one of my just absolute favorite colleagues, peers, people, pianists, uh, Glenn Zaleski. And Glenn and I, we met through piano competitions. Uh, we were both finalists for a couple of piano competitions, but neither of us won. <laughs> no, no, boo hoo. Yeah, look at us now. <laughs> yeah, we, lived, uh, we lived to uh, tell about it. That is, that is true. And we will tell you about it uh, today. And Glenn has a uh, fantastic new solo piano album out called Solo Piano Volume 2. Is that correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. um, what else do you want to plug? Well, I just, I'm going to say one thing. Just Yeah. I am Glenn Zaleski, and I'm a the owner of this book, ah. Playing Solo Jazz Piano. <laughs> and I just love it, and I would give it a wholehearted uh, recommendation for anyone out there. Thank you. Comes well, up often. This is this is not solicited. This is genuine. I, I'm just no. I'm just saying. I have it here in my bookshelf, and I've referenced it often with a lot of my students, as well as for my own edification. I got to give it up to this whole Tigran transcription at the end. Mm. Uh, if you make it all the way to the back, which I highly <laughs> recommend you do, there's some amazing stuff here. I can't believe you did. I'll send you that whole Tigran transcription. I love that. <laughs> it's yeah, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. I, yeah. Unbelievable. Just, so anyways, um, yeah. But you also have a uh, fantastic Patreon page. Um, if people are looking for more Glenn Zaleski, they can, they can support on Patreon. And you're, you're putting out a, a video like every week. Is that right? Well, yeah, on, on my Patreon page, I do um, one educational video a month. And then I do one or two uh, solo piano videos. And I also do a live stream uh, once a month which is similar to this. And I just, I play a bit and do a Q and A. And then I have some private students that I also uh, have through Patreon. So it's a whole, you know, world of, of piano stuff, if any of this interests you. Awesome. Um, so I've asked you here today, not just to plug our, our mutual products, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but to show but me an exercise. Like and you said that you have the perfect exercise that changed your life. And so I can't wait. It sounds like there's voicings. I'm, I'm excited. Oh yeah, I would love to show you uh, this exercise. When you when you mentioned that this morning, I didn't even have to think about it because there's this one exercise that was showed to me four or five years ago. Because I I really have never been like an exercise guy, um, but this one exercise is just really is terrific. And it was showed to me by a couple of pianists that uh, we know, uh, Julian Shore and Jason Yeager. Jason Yeager also appearing as part of the series. He recently showed me a Bembe exercise to do. Um, oh, I'm glad he didn't show you this exercise. <laughs> because uh, the he would have uh, rights to it. Although actually the, the, the genesis of this, of this exercise is um, Danilo Perez shows it to all of his students. So anyone that studied with Danilo likely saw this exercise. Julian and Jason both had it from, from Danilo. But actually even earlier than Danilo, it's the first exercise in a Claire Fisher book called Harmonic Exercises for Piano. Which is you a have cool that book. book that I, I do have it. I might even have it right here next to playing solo jazz piano. I do. <laughs> it's a very thin book. It's nowhere near as, as good yeah. as solo <laughs> jazz piano. Um, there's some, some really amazing yeah. stuff in here. But this okay. first exercise is great. And I'd be happy to show it to you. I would love that. Um, OK. So the, the, the crux of it is uh, this. I'll take this chord, G, B, D, E, and I'll say that's, that's like an E minor seven chord. E minor cool. seven. I'm, I'm going to put this up. I'm going to do it along with you so that everybody can see. Oh, wow. Yes, 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 yes. OK. And now here's the next chord, A minor seven. OK. Right. So you go like this, one. Now here's the next chord, D minor seven. Okay. And then G seven. Okay. Now this is a pattern that you might be able to tell. Um, so sorry, we did E minor, A minor. Mm -hmm. So e minor. it's like a three, six, two, five kind of? Yeah, it's like a three, six, two, five. But and then when you look at it just diatonically, it's this pattern that keeps going down like this. OK. 
Okay. So you could so see it's like the diatonic so circle of fifths. Ex- the diatonic circle of fifths, exactly. If, I think that's a good way of thinking of it. So wait, wait, wait. Can I can I try it before we go? Yeah, on? yeah, yeah. Because I assume there's many more steps. So I want to make sure I got this one. So. Yeah. No, I'm not doing this right. Well, that was I, that was okay, but I was starting. I was thinking of the instead of yeah. Got it. Yeah. 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 in there or no 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 just the mm-hmm. uh, that one take the ninth out of that one the f major i see yeah right right so it's not really a finger pattern like, there's not an alternation of the finger pattern it's just always the one three five seven of the key exactly of the chord fit in between a sixth. Exactly. So you can see okay. in between a sixth. Yeah. So we have a sixth, and then the thirds move down, and the sixth move down, and the thirds move down, and the sixth move oh, down. Oh, it is a finger pattern. Okay. Well, you... yeah, it's a finger pattern. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry. I I think I, I was I was that wasn't registering for some reason. But yeah. So it's sixth and thirds moving. Okay, now. let me do it one more time just now that I understand the pattern, I think. So, mm-hmm. so it's like those are the outsides are alternating down and then the insides are alternating going down. Exactly. Yeah. Not that you would want to play it like that, but that's what's happening is like the sixth that's is descending happening. then the third is descending. You know, in a way, this actually is a great exercise in and of itself. But okay, so and we're, but we're just getting warmed up. Okay, is, uh, I'm scared, man. <laughs> a lot, it's a lot to digest. Just with that, there's potentially a lot to digest. But okay, okay, so we can do that with our left hand, too. Can we? <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's, we could do uh, it in every key, right? And <laughs> well, well, actually, we, well, we, we are. We're going to get there, but, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get there, okay. So now if I take this shape, I can also do this. Instead of playing it all at once, I can play it like this. And then I can play it like this. The next one is A minor. I can play it like this. That's a very satisfying thing to play on the piano, right? You just kind of go like this. It's just... It's a lot okay. of notes, but it's kind of easy. So I now see. if I take this... Now I can break up the pattern like this. Okay. Like this. Let me try hands too so then it would be like this right, like that <laughs> had to do yeah, it oh yeah right 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 you could get well that, that's maybe another step actually you can of course get sassy with it <laughs> um but but um okay and before i show you the final thing i think it's also worth noting that you could go if i started here i could go up uh, so so that would be like But now we're moving around the circle of fifths like in the reverse direction. So it's probably yes. less useful, but it's an exercise. So it's useful, but as as an exercise, there's gonna be an application to it that we'll we'll see. Okay. So so yeah. So I feel like I'm struggling say, with whether to switch fin- like from four to three as I do it. <laughs> I know. Well, that's actually a, an interesting issue, like the, the, the fingering that you use. I mean, it is a finger pattern, but 
there's more than one way you could do it and you can learn about what fingerings work best for you as, as you do it. Um, needless to say, Jeremy, you're a quick study. <laughs> Thank you. Now here's the, here's the, here's the icing on the cake. So now okay. when the, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to get like chromatic and crazy. <laughs> Well, no, well, of course, I think you can probably see that, but, but, no, but what I want to show you is when you put the hands together, rather than have them be uh, parallel, like, um, I, when I play the sixth in my right hand, uh -huh. I can play the third in my left hand. Okay. So now I can get this thing where I go like this. Ooh. Okay, okay. A little little tongue twister it's not really even a t i mean the first time you do it it could be a tongue twister but... So I'm starting uh, right, on you, this guy. Yeah, I'm starting that guy. No. I need to hear it one more time. I don't think I. I don't think I. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's actually start. Let's start on this guy. You're playing. You're playing C. I'm playing a C major seven chord, like B, C, E, G. I have to figure out which hand to move up first. That's where I'm like getting yeah, caught. Exactly. But but that's that's it. So I think there's a lot of application with this. I mean, just getting it under your fingers at first is, I mean, it's kind of a satisfying feeling. Just this opening and closing of the hands, the way you can play all these double notes. But like, and it sounds really great. Very much. Like the, the voicings are so great. nice. The voicings are so nice. It's just a very clever way to get all these diatonic harmonies moving but you're always getting all four notes in each seventh chord you know without repeating notes and um it's it's pretty nice um i Love think it. okay there's a bunch of other things that you can that i could show that, that i'm gonna show so okay. uh of course you could do it in okay in all you should you should do it in all 12 keys needless to say So you could do it in all 12 keys, which I would recommend. But then there's this other thing that you can do that I, there's so many things you can do with. I mean, I know that you already see them, but I'm just gonna put some out there. Okay, um, love it. Like, okay, so what if I'm here? Now, the next step would be here, D minor. But what if instead of, I, instead of doing D minor, I did D7? Okay. Now, oh, so you're gonna do like secondary dominance? Well, it, it's, it's, it's even, you know, I think when you really do this, it's, it's not, it becomes not even really functional. It just becomes intervallic, like, okay, so now you can use D7, right? Uh -huh. And now I could do the whole thing in the key of G. But now, the next step would be here. But what if I played, uh, what if instead of doing this, I played... such a pretty way to modulate like those modulations sound so nice it's so slick and also any any moment any chord that you play is an opportunity to modulate because if you take any major six and make it a minor six you're in a new key if you take any major third and make it a minor key you're you, my, minor then you're in a new key so you're in this world where you're like moving in a way that's very physically satisfying on the piano and you're also modulating in a way that's very theoretically sound 
Um, so you could kind of just get into this flow where you just, here, I'm going to start here. You can get into this flow of harmony where you're not really like in a particular key and you're coming up with this stuff that like, you, it would be hard to think of if you were thinking about chord changes, but if you're just moving your hands this way, you can find this stuff. Okay, now where am I? Now it's D flat. <laughs> now I'm in B flat. Now I'm in like B or something. Now I'm gonna go to A flat. Now I'm in D flat. Now I'm gonna go to B flat. You know, wow. you can just go forever. And I actually yeah. would recommend that. I mean, this exercise, there's so many, obviously that's an advanced application, but um, I mean, just doing this for, 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 for at some levels is, is a good exercise. Yeah, do and that in all keys. In, yeah, and then just, just being able to do it in C major is, is, um, is a great exercise. It'll get you feeling better when you play the piano. I mean, this feeling uh, is, is, an essential so harmonious you don't want to overlook it yeah but then Wait, me, it, I, it, I want to try modulating can i can i try okay, yeah, people, yeah, yeah people can maybe see it on the staff too so yeah. i'm gonna start i'm gonna go to your d7 yeah You know, you made it, and, 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 and it's just a wonderful way to move through harmony. Um, and maybe just a few other things. I mean, because okay. there's, there's even more things, but you could also do this. You could do it on a, on a melodic oh, minor scale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, you you're fast. It, you, you've spent a lot of time well, practicing this. I've practiced this. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I, uh, but you're, Jason you're... Julian showed this to me, I guess it was probably four or five years ago. So it's been on my mind since then. And also, I've showed it to dozens of students because it's just so wonderful but you can also do it on um other inversions i mean so it, i showed you this first but oh. you could do this like root position so second it, inversion like exactly so that would be The original one. Show, show, show me. Yeah, let me see. So, so, so you you end up with slightly um, I don't know what's the word, slightly more angular intervals. So it'll be like this. Oh, so it becomes a second in the middle. He's second in the middle. I see. So. just something that once it gets in your fingers and in your ears it, it comes out it, i mean for me it's just come out in my piano playing in sort of unexpected but very useful uh ways um, it trains your it trains your ears it trains your mind and it trains your your, your fingers um in a very applicable way uh, so i really would recommend this exercise i love it man thank you for showing that to me that's, that's yeah i didn't even have to think when you asked me about an exercise this, this, uh, it was like, of course, I'm, that, that, that's the one. It's, uh, it, it's, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, check out Glenn's Patreon and listen to Solo Volume 2. That's kind of like everywhere that anything's streaming, right? Or is there a way that they can support you and pay for it? Well, yeah, if you want to uh, support me and pay for it, you can do so on Bandcamp. Um, but there's other ways you can support too. I mean, if, if, if you want to take a deeper dive, I have videos of all the tracks on the album on my Patreon page. And also, 
about 40 videos also from the, that session all on my Patreon page. And are there uh, 40 well, videos? Just, just well, because I, I, um, well, maybe this is for another, uh, <laughs> okay. session, but the way, the way the album was put together is I, I, um, over the pandemic, I went to a recording studio nearby and I, in, over the course of three sessions, I recorded like 40 tunes oh my and God. I used them as videos for my, my Patreon, uh, supporters. But then I just took six of them and made an album out of it. So um, that's how the album came about. More on that later. Also, if you want to support, just just listen to it and tell your friends. That would be the, that would be the best thing. As, uh, so, yeah, that's that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Glenn. Um, Thank we'll you. See Jeremy. you soon. Yes. Yes.